Singapore is bringing together major clinical R&D groups to advance biomedical research. It will be under a new consortium for Clinical Research and Innovation Singapore, or CRIS. A new initiatives include tie-ups that give cancer researchers easier access to data, uh, to recruit a wider pool of patients for clinical trials in the region. Uh, another is a first-of-its-kind certification course for cell therapy. Now, for more on all this, we're joined by Dr. Danny Soon. He is the CEO of CRIS. Uh, Dr. Soon, I was reading uh, among the aims that uh, CRIS has is to ensure that uh, the programme stay relevant to the needs of uh, Singapore patients as well as to synergize the scientific resources, capabilities and finances. Uh, were these all not happening before CRIS came about? Hi, Joe. Thanks very much for having me. So indeed, you know, over the last couple of decades, uh, through efforts in the Ministry of Health, but also through other agencies, uh, in, in ASTAR, for example, and in MOE, uh, there have been a lot of uh, uh, peaks of excellence that have been developed in areas like clinical research, in precision medicine, in cell therapy, uh, in cancer. But uh, all of these things are not static. They develop over time, they advance. And as we've in Singapore advance our uh, capabilities in each of these spaces, uh, it does come to a point where it, it, it's important to try and bring them together to synergize right across because there are a lot of cross linkages that can occur. For example, the treatment of cancer has been revo revolutionized by, by cell therapies. Precision medicine helps to guide a lot of uh, things that we do in clinical trials, uh, things that we do in cancer treatment. So it is timely and it's actually appropriate for these uh, units to come together uh, to, to be more deliberate in terms of how we link up, how we work together and how we build horizontals. Yeah, because the consortium brings together five different entities and I was curious as why you chose these five as opposed to uh, another five, particularly your focus on uh, cancer research for this collaboration. And a part of that is, I suppose, what you mentioned, the rapid change that's happening in this area. That is correct. So oncology actually, not just in Singapore, but globally, forms a very big portion of healthcare spend. It also forms a, a outsized uh, proportion of clinical research. So uh, in the, this is an area that Singapore has a lot of strengths in, uh, particularly through our two big cancer centers in Sing Health as well as the NUHS. And uh, we felt that's definitely a, a space that we would uh, want to start off with. It's not to preclude going forwards that we will include uh, programs in other therapeutic areas, mm. potentially, say, in cardiovascular mm. and so forth. So yeah. certainly that's a good place to start. And there's a good... Yeah. Mm. That, that was my next question. You know, uh, the, what are some of the other areas that perhaps aren't developing as quickly, you know, don't have that much attention, but, but still very relevant to the ageing population uh, in Singapore? Can you give us uh, some examples? Right. So, I mean, amongst uh, chronic illnesses, uh, cardiovascular certainly is a big one. So, uh, a, a lot of our elderly, uh, a lot of people who die early, die from cardiovascular diseases, be it heart attack and strokes and so forth. Uh, diabetes, uh, endocrine disorders are another one. And uh, this is a space, uh, you know, Singapore has one of the highest prevalence rates of diabetes in the world. And so these are areas that potentially going forwards, uh, we would like to bring forward. Uh, you know, these are all under development at this point. There's nothing that's particularly concrete. But nonetheless, we feel that uh, in focusing, we can actually be, be more effective. Right. So are you also going to, to apply that, that same, you know, the acceleration into the area of cell therapy as well in terms of the knowledge and training of healthcare professionals here? Um, uh, because there are gaps to be plugged in this area, aren't there? Oh, absolutely. So cell therapy, you know, over the last uh, 10 years or so has really undergone a revolution. So uh, there, there have been cancers in the past that were uh, really quite refractory to treatment. And with the, advent, with the advent of cell therapies, those have become really much more accessible. It's not to say that every single one of them, uh, we've been successful in treating the cell therapy so far, but the initial indications is that we are getting a handle on how the biology of uh, engineering engineered cells can, can attack cancers and how we can really change the outcomes in terms of survival and, and quality of life. So that's an area that's growing greatly, uh, but there's a lot to be learned still. So in terms of the understanding of the biology of the cell, in terms of understanding how to assay those cells, meaning how to characterize, how to, to understand their function. And then the, 
the, the actual work of manufacturing these cells uh, itself is still pretty early in terms of its technological development. Plenty of things to do there. The, the current processes are quite costly and uh, very uh, uh, you know takes quite a bit of time. So many places to improve, and we're working on on, on all of these aspects. Mm, uh, we wish you all the best in in the consortium, Danny Soon, CEO of the Consortium of Research and Innovation Singapore. Thank you.